afternoon, depending on where in the world you are at this moment. Welcome to the Entrepreneurva Founder Webcast. Today is going to be the second part of our Entrepreneurial Coaches uh, episode. Actually, we had so much to talk about last time that we decided to do another part. Uh, welcome, Tom. Would you yes. please introduce yourself briefly? Yes, I am Tom Clement, and I am an assistant professor of management and entrepreneurship at Minnesota State University, Mankato, uh, about an hour south of the Twin Cities of Minneapolis and St. Paul. And I am just getting into my 21st year of teaching entrepreneurship, among other things, and uh, glad to be with you. Inga? Yes, so my name is Inga de Dreug. Uh, I am from the Netherlands and currently living in the Netherlands. Uh, I have lived for many years in Colombia. I've done a lot of work with entrepreneurship in Colombia and um, now back in, in the Netherlands. Uh, I'm really building the community around the playground for entrepreneurs, which is the game that the serious game that I have developed uh, on the basis of that experience working with uh, very early phase entrepreneurship. So this is really about how to uh, explore an opportunity in the market and how to start building a business. And that's what the game is about. And that's what I'm uh, uh, supporting coaches, facilitators, educators to do as well. Great. So we have a very interesting theme today, which is coaching. Let's start with good versus bad coaching, Tom. Yes. There's so many different coaching styles and so many different coaches. A lot of them are good coaches, of course, but there is also some bad coaching out there. What would be really red flags for you? Um, one of the things I know that is important when I look at a good coach, and I'm a huge sports fan, and I always hate to drag the sports analogy into it, but when you talk about coaching, you sort of almost have to, is that really good coaches, yes, they have to tell people sometimes what they need to do, but they're even better at getting people to realize what they need to do on their own. Um, so they're really good at sort of almost teasing information out of people and getting them to sort of realize uh, their, their strengths and their weaknesses. And I know for me, um, I started off with a SCORE mentor, which in the United States is the Service Corps of Retired Execs, and he was my coach. And one of the – he was a really good person, and he was a successful – businessman in his own right uh but one of the biggest things that existed right off the bat was a massive uh generation gap um he was uh in his 70s and i was in my 20s um he had been in a very high margin retail type business and i was getting into a very slim margin retail business and in, in the power sports and motorcycle business and i think he just had a hard time understanding that space so one of the things I would say right off the bat when you look at good coaching versus bad coaching is um, make sure that your your goals and your uh, sort of values are aligned yeah. um, and, and that coaches should also be very adaptable. Um, you know, in the United States, uh, there was a, a you know famous basketball coach, Coach Krzyzewski of Duke Basketball, uh, Coach K, everybody called him. And one of the things I always respected about him, whether you liked him or didn't like him, was how adaptable he was to the various different changes. I mean, he even got into doing social media and different things towards the end of his career before he retired. And I think even entrepreneur coaches need to be adaptable. They need to know about things like AI and uh, different types of emerging technologies. And yes, there are some people that feel that business is business is business, you know, that every business has to make a profit and they're all fundamentally the same. But there's also a lot of things that go into that that coaches need to be aware of. So um, I think somebody that's set in their ways um, and very stubborn and sort of living in maybe the the way things used to be in business is is one of the major red flags for me. Yeah, How about you? definitely. I, I agree. The thing is that um, uh, coaching entrepreneurs, like if, if you as a coach can get them to go to their own reflections, go through their own reflections and get their own insights, the message is only getting stronger, right? So right. that's the best thing, right? Through questions, 
Have you talked with this customer? Have you asked about what did you hear? Uh, read between the lines. What did they really want to say? Right? Those kind of right. reflective questions can really lead to insights. And those insights, if the entrepreneur can get them, can get there themselves, that's very strong as a coach if you can do that. Now, the second best way I would say is storytelling. So there's a couple of things that you might not be able to get through reflection on their own experiences. But if you can share a story about somebody who's trying to do something in a certain sense similar, it might be something, maybe a channel that's similar or something like that, then you can really have them reflect on that story and also get through the message. Um, some of them might need a stronger intervention. Sometimes that's necessary to tell them, well, I don't think that's necessarily going to work. Please revise and be sure about right. the decisions that you make. However, um, it, the more they can do themselves, the better because the message only gets stronger. So what's really a red flag for me is those coaches who preach one way to success, their way. Exactly. Um, another red flag, if coaches don't ask questions and if coaches are not listening to the entrepreneurs, right, to kind of throw away, uh, throw around a, a judgment about what they've done or what they haven't done or just judge without really listening to what the experience of the entrepreneur has been. Uh, that's a really big red flag for me as well. I read a great quote um, just a few weeks ago. I was doing some research for for something. I was prepping for class, and um, the quote was that the the best leaders ask the best questions. Yeah. So leadership is not about always knowing everything and, and always sort of being in charge, so to speak. But it's also being humble enough and willing enough to ask the right questions. And Definitely. I think that's a great point. And then. You know, I would actually also say that coaching, especially in the entrepreneurial space, is a mu is as much about facilitating as it is telling an entrepreneur what to do. You're almost really more of a facilitator in a lot of ways. Um, we can use the coaching label because it's convenient and it makes sense to people, but you're really facilitating yes. somebody's success by doing all of the things that yeah. you discussed um, and and some of the things that that bring the best out of somebody as opposed to just purely telling them. And, and again, storytelling is huge. And we get thrown under the bus a lot in entrepreneurship education because we don't rely on, as much on theory uh, and great theoretical constructs maybe as some of the other business disciplines, for example, that, that are out there like management. Um, but and, and so we get accused of telling war stories all the time. But those real life stories and the things that we you know that we've gone through as entrepreneurs a lot of times if they're applicable if it's just somebody sitting around waxing about the past that's different but if it's applicable to what the entrepreneur is going through oftentimes you can add a lot of value to their you know trying to solve whatever struggle it is that they're involved in um as a as a founder so i think that's important for sure Yes. Yeah, great. So let's take a moment to say hi to the people who have joined us. Uh, so we have a couple of comments. Please do comment also in, in the chat if you haven't done so already where you're from. Um, and uh, feel free to say hi or ask uh, questions so we can actually make the session even better. We've right. got a lot of insights and things um, uh, prepared, but still your questions will make it... Um, will uh, make it much more interactive probably. So Veronica saying hi. Uh, hi, Veronica. Um, I think Veronica's from Italy, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, then there's Mike, our frequent Mike is all stalwart. <laughs> <laughs> and we were actually just talking about the weather and he's saying happy October. October, yeah. So, <laughs> I think it's the same as here in Europe. We've got also a lot of very summer-like weather in this October. You know, and Mike points out, he just put a, put a note in the chat that, you know, the, the best coaches are the best listeners, you know, yeah. and admit they may not be the best uh, help. Um, and again, the facilitator thing, uh, he would use the term Rolodex in there, which we always laugh about because we date ourselves. There used to be a thing that used to sit on people's desk full of phone numbers called a Rolodex. And 
And, you know, they have a good Rolodex. And if they don't know the answer to a question, they're willing to help the entrepreneur find that answer, right? So they'll go out and, and use that contact list that they have to connect the entrepreneur to the individual that can get them the answer. I mean, I have to do the same yeah. thing in academic advising. When I talk to my students, there's a lot of things they'll ask me that I don't know the answer to directly. Um, and I, ha I have to figure out a way to sort of facilitate them getting the correct answer. Yes. Looks like yeah. Veronica has a question too. Yes, Veronica's, and she's based in Sweden. That was my mistake. <laughs> um, where can I find clients in the space industry for my coaching programs? Um, the, that's a question focused very much on the commercial side of the coaching. The coaching. I think you want to start your own uh, your own program, Veronica. Um, you would have to uh, probably figure out where those people are located, either online or in physical events or things, and that way you can probably access them best. So LinkedIn is a good place because it's um, very professional. So you can really find a lot of people you can filter on a lot of people and therefore uh, kind of figure out and then also the context that you do get uh, see who they are interacting with and start interacting with those people um, that's uh, a little bit out of the scope of this session uh, we might do another session uh, for that but that's the kind of short answer i can give you one recommendation I would have too, and we're going to talk about this in just a little bit as one of our items today is um, I would ask uh, ChatGPT. Yeah. Um, get into a conversation with ChatGPT, let it know uh, what persona you're in as far as what you're trying to do and ask it to help you. Um, and just ask it, uh, you know, what would be a way for me to receive some coaching in that space? Um, and you'd be surprised it might have some really good suggestions for you or might be able to point you in the direction that you need to go to find the answers to that. Um, and again, we'll talk a little bit about AI coaching in a bit, but um, that's a that's a huge uh, resource that you have at your fingertips that can help you. Definitely, definitely. It might not always have the truth for you necessarily, but it, uh, it's great to bounce some ideas off of, to right. really uh, get some, do some brainstorming and get some new ideas and they just might work, uh, which is quite possible. Yeah. Um, Let's talk about peer-to-peer -peer coaching. You yeah. want to transition into that a little bit? Yeah. We Let's did discuss that. that last week or last time, I should say, two weeks ago um, and sort of just skimmed over the top of it because peer-to-peer -peer, uh, coaching is is really uh i think a growing area even though it's actually quite old it's been around for a long time in one form or another but one of the first things i want to stress and you and i've talked about this and, and you can add to this conversation inga is that a lot of people think that networking just rubbing shoulders with other entrepreneurs is a form of coaching because of some of the uh, advice that you might receive and we feel very strongly, the two of us, that networking is not coaching. It can lead to coaching. You know, it can develop a co into a coaching relationship, depending on how that goes. But a coaching relationship is much deeper than just networking. Yeah. Um, it's much different than just going to a conference and sitting around a table with some folks and talking business. And there, there has to be a, a little bit of a deeper connection uh, than than what exists in sort of a networking space. What are your thoughts on that, Inga? Yeah, uh, networking, uh, you usually first kind of uh, uh, show the positive side of everything, right? right? So you have short pitches, you have a lot of people to kind of figure out if there's something there to kind of build a relationship on or to really uh, uh, see if there's any opportunity if you want to do this business with this with these people. That's what networking is. So that might eventually lead to a relationship that can lead to peer-to-peer -peer coaching, um, but it's not it's not there yet. So peer-to-peer -peer coaching is more of a probably an intervision. Right. Uh, people who kind of stand on the same point. Um, maybe some of them have just overcome certain obstacles and others haven't yet. 
uh, and the other way around with other parts of the business model probably so therefore you can really support each other and you can give each other feedback on what works and what doesn't work and go deep into those topics because you have real life stories to tell right, right? and that's that's peer-to-peer -peer coaching and then that's where it gets useful when you can share those experiences you know that certain things so one of the entrepreneurs might have tried out LinkedIn and the other one Facebook and the other one Instagram and then they kind of share their experiences that's when it turns into coaching because they can learn from the story of the other person well just to back up I noticed Veronica had a question you know asking sort of is it is it a one-to-one -one coaching relationship let me explain a couple of examples of peer-to-peer -peer coaching it can be one-to-one -one, but another example would be something called a startup cohort um, yeah. These have gotten quite popular, uh, both in the United States and, and you know, throughout the world, uh, where organizations will bring together several startups, and it might be a half a dozen, for example, people that are looking at starting their business ventures at roughly about the same time, and they actually put you into almost like an educational cohort. So like some people, when they're going through a master's or a PhD program, there'll be in a cohort where you're all, it's almost like a learning group where you're all, you're all kind of in it together. That's basically what a startup cohort is. So it's, it's often structured and in structured, I mean, you know, very formal uh, in how it's put together and it's, it's peer to peer in the sense that you're all in it together. You share accountability, you share numbers with each other, you discuss your business issues and both your issues as well as your successes and you try to learn from one another in in very much a, a you know a peer to peer sense in in that you don't have this one individual that is your coach who is delivering advice and counsel to you you're sort of all bouncing off of each other um yeah. and of course it can be peer to peer in this, in a singular sense where it's just you and another entrepreneur going back and forth and helping each other uh that can certainly work too but the startup cohort is one example um, another quick example. I'd, I'd, like to, I'd like to make a small comment on that. Yep. Um, in my experience, the incubator or whatever organization is organizing that cohort really actively needs to do something to make that happen in order for it to be coaching. Right. right. Because otherwise you get these water cooler type of conversations, coffee machine, how was your weekend? Which is great to socialize, but it's not coaching. <laughs> Right, well, so right. you really create a space for that, either yeah. inside a workshop or you might do something with reflective questions or some other kind of dynamic dynamic to enhance that interaction between founders who do not necessarily know each other. Right. That's really necessary to make it happen because then you can create deep conversation. And that's, that's what you great, want. That's a great point that I forgot to mention in the whole peer-to-peer -peer coaching thing it's it's the it's best facilitated by somebody so you, sh you need to have a facilitator of some sort from the organization that helps govern the conversation so again it isn't just those water cool type water cooler type of conversations because as we all know when you get a half a dozen people sitting around in a group you can go off on a tangent pretty easy and one of the things that's important is having someone to sort of pull people back into the conversation and keep things focused on the on the task at hand. Um, and you know, one another another example of this that I personally experienced and I've been a part of is something called a twenty club. Um, this is an old peer to peer coaching model that dates back to the fifties uh, that was used a lot in the automotive industry in the United States, and it was also used a lot in the motorcycle and power sports industry, which I was a part of. I was a member of a twenty club. And they use the term 20 because it's usually 20 dealers. It doesn't have to be, but that was just kind of the number that they used. But the the whole key behind it is it's 20 dealers from all different parts of the country. So you're not really in a 20 club with somebody just down the street from you. You're all over the country. And we used to meet three times a year uh, at just a, a, a fairly neutral location. Usually it was just a conference uh, type motel. And we would all sit around and we would compare composite numbers with each other, financial statements and things like that. Um, and we just hold each other accountable. We'd help each other drive systems into our businesses. Uh, we would look at a variety of different metrics that we could sort of judge whether that business was being successful or maybe lagging behind the others. Um, and that was a really great 
example. And it's not for everybody. I mean, it, it, if you don't like sort of being under the hot lights of accountability uh, in a one-to-one -one role, you're definitely not going to like uh, a peer group like a 20 club because you're going to have maybe you know 10 other dealers telling you that, you know what, you're not meeting the mark on these particular metrics and you've got to try to do better. Um, but I also think that kind of accountability is important, especially when you're a solo entrepreneur, if you're running your business by yourself and you don't have a business partner uh, to sort of bounce ideas off of, you don't have that level of accountability sometimes. Um, you're purely accountable to your financial statements. Um, and I think that by the time you're accountable to your financials, it's often too late. Um, you've already made the mistake. And if you can make some adjustments along the way uh, and, and get some real practical advice, I think that's uh, a really helpful situation. And exactly. these, one quick thing I'll just add and I'll, let, I'll, I'll let, let us move on to something else, but these don't have to be uh, necessarily some formal organization. I, I believe that entrepreneurs can form their own groups. You yeah. still need to have some kind of facilitation device in place. Um, but you've seen some of these groups form in like buying groups, for example, for like uh, boutique clothing stores are an example where they have these buying groups where the stores can all get together and buy merchandise in larger quantities. Um, and there's been some of these sorts of peer to peer groups formed out of those uh, where you help each other out. But again, like you mentioned, that facilitation and that sort of the reeling in of the conversation is really important. So it doesn't fly off, fly off course too far um, and you're able to stay on task. Definitely. And you get you get the depth into the conversation. So um, and what I've seen with the playground, which is really a tool to kind of facilitate that conversation also, um, if there's experienced entrepreneurs, it's very easy to go into depth, right? right. Into a deep conversation and really get to insights and, and reflect. If it's students, they often don't have the experience yet to do it. Sometimes they're willing to and trying to. Um, sometimes they kind of stay superficial. But the more experienced the entrepreneur, the more stories to tell, the more insights to share. And that really gets it easier. So that's that's really the difference in the level of facilitation that you also need for this, this type of, of conversation. So let's right. check back in the chat for a moment. Um, Zuli made a comment uh, about uh, Zuli is actually a playground facilitator and she comes from uh, the world of coaching, uh, uh, more life coaching and even couples coaching. So um, the method that she's actually using is clear language questions. Those are really deep like future focused reflection. So how now to kind of get over it and get it better. Yes, that really relates uh, from the from the world of, of life coaching to uh, what we're doing with business coaching as well. So maybe you make this mistake, you learned what you need to learn and now you get to like the, the future and you focus on how to fix it, how to get it better. Right. So that's, um, that's uh, Zuli's comment. And then we have a, a comment from the buses. And the thing is the bus is that uh, we have different, uh, different channels paired up with this live stream. So you probably can only see the comments of your particular channel. There's a couple of people in other uh, channels. So that's what we're responding on as well. Uh, but not, not necessarily what you see in, in the chat. It's all very complex, isn't it? <laughs> The more can, technology, the more yes, complex. it can be anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get to coaching with AI, Tom. You have a lot more experience and a lot more experimentation done with this than, than I have really uh, to uh, really exchange ideas with ChatGPT on how to continue as an entrepreneur, how to get the right insights and how to do uh, get your insights from customer discovery, for example, I have experience, even though I realize there's probably folks out there who have 20 times more experience. Um, I spend a lot of time on chat GPT and I think it's just one of those endless experiments uh, where you could spend uh, 24 hours a day on it and still not be able to know all of its capabilities. Uh, but I, but I sort of heard about this mentoring and coaching 
uh, conversation uh, a couple months ago, and I decided to start trying it out and, and doing some experimenting with it. And you know, one of the first things that's important to know is that you need to make ChatGPT understand who you are. So you need to do a really good job of explaining what your background is, uh, sort of your persona, if you will. Um, you know what you what you've done in the past, what you're trying to do right now, and what you'd like to do in the future, and then really put it into that mentoring or coaching uh, persona of its own. So tell it that I would like help with coaching, mentoring. Um, one of the things too that's important to remember about ChatGPT is it's re it's really programmed to be uh, really upbeat and positive, which there's nothing wrong with, but it has a little bit harder time giving you the downside of situations. If you ask it for the downside, it will give it to you, uh, but it'll do a lot of very positive, upbeat type of coaching. Um, again, with the, which there's nothing wrong with, but sometimes you need the straight story. Um, and you sort of feel like it might be hedging around a little bit. Um, so I've asked it many questions. I've, I've gotten into coaching discussions regarding business model canvas information. Um, I've even asked it for uh, survey uh, questions to ask people for customer discovery. Um, and actually designed an entire, uh, like a mail out type of survey or something that you would send out online. Um, and it did a really good job of putting all the survey questions. And this is very techie academic talk, but into constructs so that you can test the reliability of the of the questions that it's asking and the answers that you're getting back in return. Um, I've asked it about sort of life and career questions, like uh, sort of pose the question that, hey, I'm in a career, I'm making this much money, I'm doing this, I'm feeling stuck. Uh, what are some things that I could do differently or what are some suggestions? And it made some really good suggestions and you can push back at it a little bit and ask further questions and ask it to delve into more detail. Um, and it will give you a lot of really good information to help you make decisions. Um, so I'm really impressed with it. One of the things that's a little quirky is it always sort of assumes that every interaction you have with it will be your last. So a lot of times it will sign off with something like, Hey, have a great day or Hey, good luck with this. So, I mean, it's not like a conversation that you might have between you and I, for instance, for instance, where the conversation doesn't come to a close until we decide to close it. Yeah. Um, so there's just little quirky things you need to get used to because it is an AI bot. Uh, but, you know, again, I think of myself as a 25 year old entrepreneur sitting in my office at one o'clock in the morning, trying to figure out a tough problem. Um, you know, when all my coaches have gone to bed for the night, uh, it, it would be a really great help with that. So I highly recommend people look into that and it's free. So, yeah. Yeah. It's great to get some inspiration. I totally agree. I haven't been asking it too much coaching questions yet, but that's definitely something that probably can get you unstuck at a certain moment or really kind of give you a push to uh, to try out something different, a different insight or something. Right. So let's let's continue with uh, um, coach entrepreneur fit. At the start of the conversation, uh, we've already or you've already mentioned uh, your uh, coach, your first coach with your first venture. Yes. Right. So there's so many coaches out there and there's so many, well, coaches, entrepreneurs out there as well. So how to get the right fit? Because sometimes there's just something that you can really add to a person, to a coachee or uh, the other way around. There's, there's a match. Right. Uh, but there's many ways in which you can't really find that match, right? Age gap is one thing and being up to date with like the most, uh, the most, um, uh, with technology and with whatever's going on. Um, I think there's a lot of people who might need different different types of encouragement as well. Sometimes I even find that uh, when I look back at my experience in Colombia and I've seen in my time in Colombia, I've seen over 500 startup teams. There's been some people that I've been really tough with. And sometimes I think it's even they were even more successful than the people that I wasn't so tough on. Right. So, yeah, there's that old quote, read the room. You know, you have to read the room when you're dealing with people and, and everybody's different. I have to do that with students. I mean, there's some students that you can really have a very frank conversation with. 
And then yes. there's other times when you have to, you have to throttle back your, your yeah. intensity a yeah. little bit. Yes. That's, that's a two side conversation, right? Because some, some people are really good at being tough and other people are really good at giving confidence, right? Yes. And other people are really good at something else that the entrepreneur might need at that point of their journey. Um, it's, it's very important to, um, both as a coach and as an entrepreneur, I think, be aware of what works for you, right? Right. And make sure there is a match there. At, at the start of this conversation, we already mentioned a couple of red flags. I wouldn't go there, right? Right. <laughs> but still, there are so many different coaching styles. And as a coach, well, sometimes you need to be empath em uh, empathic because that's yep. what the entrepreneur needs. Right. Entrepreneurship is a roller coaster. And sometimes you're very high and you need kind of ground under your feet because you don't want to fall too deep. But sometimes right. you're down there and you really need somebody to kind of give you stability. And uh, a coach can really help with that. Uh, yeah, another, the, two, the two big yeah. E words is empathetic and emphatic, you know, and you have to find yeah. that find that balance between the two. Yeah. Go yeah. Ahead. And being able to switch. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> for sure <laughs> yes <laughs> definitely um, quick question from mike that he threw up that i think is interesting that some people might want to know is it best to clear your messages with chat gpt before you start like a, a say a mentoring session i think if i remember correctly you're allowed to do 20 chats a month on the free version i think it's 20 um, so I would actually recommend that if you're going to start, for example, a mentoring or coaching conversation over an entrepreneurial idea, <clears throat> I would start a new a new chat. Um, and you don't have to clear all your other chats out, but I would just start a new chat just for that particular topic because that sort of starts it off almost like a clean sheet of paper, if you will. Um, and even that said, in some of the chats I've had, ChatGPT will lose its mind sometimes and start doing weird weird things. Um, but still, I don't think you need to clear the chat out. You just sort of need to give it time. The thing people need to remember about chat GPT is it's being really overwhelmed right now uh, because so many people are trying it every day. Um, and there's times when I'll try to log on to it at work and it actually won't let me log in because it's just being overwhelmed too much. So um, that's, that's a, a thing. And then he also mentioned doing pro formas with it. I've done some of that work with it. And it does a really good job of suggesting different things related to like, you know, profit and loss statements and things like that. So, and I think this is only going to get better, especially once they train it on more data uh, in the future. Cause I mean, it's only trained up through September, 2021 on data. And I think once they update that data, um, it's only going to get better. So, I mean, the sky's yeah. the limit as far as that's concerned. Anyway. Great. So we are already three minutes over time. We always are. Yeah. <laughs> That's part of the. That, let's just check if there is still a couple of questions in there. I think we had about all the questions. I think we hit most of them. Yes. Um, do we want to just mention before we close sort of the coaching the coach conversation you, you and I had talked about, about coaches continuing to get coaching themselves? Um, I, I think that would have, because I see there's also a couple of questions from Veronica, uh, like oh, earlier in the session. Okay. Yep. Go ahead. Because we've been focusing mostly on, uh, on, uh, the coachee, right. And the right. interaction between the two of them. Now mm -hmm. the, the coach, um, might be another conversation of another half an hour. Actually, we could do right. part three. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I think that's coaching the coach, and that's a question also worth uh, going a bit deeper into. So I think we'll leave that for one of our next sessions, if you're okay sure. with that. Yep. Yeah. All I would say is never stop learning as a coach. That would be my yeah. best advice. Um, never feel like even though you were in business for 30 years and now you're a coach that you, that you know it all. Because, I mean, I learn something new every day, and I've been teaching for 21 years, not – not that there aren't people that have taught longer, but never stop learning. Always be a lifelong learner when it comes to coaching. 
Yes. And if you see good coaches, whether they're in the business space or somewhere else, uh, that's something they really take into account. Yes. Uh, right. Whether it's in their own area about coaching, they keep learning, but also in other areas, like, for example, either their sport or business in general or social media that's coming up, chat GPT that's coming up. Right. They, they keep learning new things. They keep open-minded towards what's what's happening in the world so yeah i uh, totally agree with that excellent great excellent so let's um close the session for today thank you all for attending and for your questions and your comments it's always a pleasure to um to receive questions and to be able to interact with uh, with the audience so uh thank you for yes. um for being here and have a great uh, a great week ahead i would say thanks everybody and we'll see you again in 2 weeks <laughs>